Okay. Ready? Yep. All right. Uh, morning class. I'm Mr. Prentice. And today I'm going to be teaching you guys about gable roofs and how to lay a roof rafter out for a gable roof. All right. To start off, we'll look at your handout. At the very top of it, I'm just going to have some key points of uh, what a gable roof is. I mean, every, it's one of the most common roofs out there. It's a two side roof that comes to a point. That point is connected by a board that's called the ridge board. Uh, well two sides that come down into tail cuts, and right where you see the ends near the wall is where you usually put another board called the fascia board, which I'll mention later when I'm laying out the roof rafter. There's other parts of the roof, uh, the ceiling, all these parts that like help support and like keep it in one one place, like the ceiling joists, the gable end studs so you can have something to nail to as a flat surface of the wall. Collar ties help it for structure, leaning side to side. So the next part uh, I want to go over with you guys is roof framing terms. Whenever I'm laying out a roof rafter, it's important to know some key measurements and to know those measurements, they come with terms. Whenever I'm going to lay this roof rafter out, you go by, to determine the length of the rafter, you have to go by what's called unit you know, triangles and you step up from there step, using steps. The unit triangle is comprised of the rise, unit rise, and the unit run. So out of all these letters, which one is unit rise? Anybody? D. Yes, D. So that's not to confuse it with the total rise, which, what would that be? C. Yes. Yeah, and so on, like, we'll just go over all these. Unit run, which one do you guys think that would be? E. H. B. E. H. Right. Unit run is always 12 inches. Like, when we go by steps, you're going by, like, diagonal steps by unit unit you know, triangle, so you're going 12 inches every single time to step. The rise can vary depending on how high your roof is. Uh, unit length, what will be unit length? That's obviously Sam. E. Yes. Uh, total run. This will be very tricky. Which one? No. no, it's actually G. Unit run? Well, when you're working with this, the span is your entire width of the building. So if we're making a roof rafter, we're not going the entire span. We're only going half of that. And that half is called the total run that we're going to be going by. Yes, G. So I already described that F would be the ridge, or that's where the ridge board would be. And last one, I think the uh, line length. The line length would be, we're going with length, we're going with the actual, Sam? B? B, yes, good job. So, all right, with that said, we're gonna, I'm going to give a short, like a really brief example of laying out a roof rafter in front of you guys and then letting you guys do it afterwards, which I'm not really going to, we don't have time for that. But, for, for laying out a roof rafter, two key things you need to know, if you have to know any measurements, is the span and the total rise. So in this case, we're going to pretend we're making a, uh, a garage that would be 12 foot wide. So if you can write horizontally where the span is, just write 12 foot. And for the height, we will make it uh, 4 foot. That'll make, that'll make sure the math is pretty easy for us. All right, so to determine like how the lay, how what length the rafter has to be, we have to know the pitch or the slope. And to find the pitch, you have to know the total rise and you know the total run. So in this case, total rise would be four foot. What would be the total run? Yes, six. So that pitch would be 4 over 6, which is 2 thirds. In that case, since I told you before that our unit runs are always 12 inches, we're going to be going, I mean, what's, like, just 
convert two thirds into twelfths, and that would be eight twelfths. Which that's also the example that was right above on the diagram right above it. So with eight twelve, that's gonna be our pitch. The tools I'm gonna to use to lay this out, we have our board. Usually they're wider and they're not twisted. And they're longer too. I just know which one will be my hands on here from no on. And other tools will be a framing square, that's your main one. And with on here are two gauges. The, it, this just helps you out. Like you could line it up every single time, but this like keeps it like accurate all the time, it's like step by step. You don't have to worry about any kind of shifts. So with that, now we know our pitch. It's going to be eight twelfths. So what I'm going to do on a framing square uh, for terms, this part is called the blade, and this is the tongue. Usually, I mean, I don't think it really matters, but I always keep the blade at 12 inch, like it's always 12 inches. And now we know our pitch will be eight for the rise each step. I will line this up. Well, I already did all the math is to save time. But usually I'll line up like this. And I'll move these gauges until this line up with 12 and this line up with 8. It's already done. So to start off, I'm going to start off at, if you look at the diagram, I'm going to start from the top where the ridge board is. And I'm going to put it over here. So when I line this up at 8 12, that's on my slope. I'm just going to make one line just to start it off. Yeah. Now from there, uh, we might have to change some things, but since we know our total run is six foot for the rafter, we're going to go, and we're going by 12 inches each step. How many steps do we need? If the whole, if the whole total run is six foot, and we're going by intervals of 12, how many steps is that? Six. So when I do this, when I start off with my initial line, I make my line, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark right where the 12 is for my next line, which should be roughly right here. I'll go. So when I go over, I look for that mark again, line it up, draw a line, and this would be one step. So I'm just going to write number one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep lining it up Marking at 12 until I make it to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, which I'm not going to have enough for 6. I'll probably be like 4 or 5. So as I do this, I'm just going to keep labeling them as I go. Spots. 
so I get a nice straight line. All right, and I'm going to label that, if this is 6, for the overhang, I'm just going to put, uh, they taught us to put OH for overhang. That's our 8 inches overhang. So after that, uh, one thing that you could, could do that is good to do, if you look at the top picture of your handout, the walls, when the rafter sits on a wall, you could have them sit directly on the wall and toenail it, but like, it's not as secure as if you put a notch into it, and that notch is called a bird's mouth. To lay out a bird's mouth is really easy. It makes everything so much simpler if you do it. You go by the last one you made. This is where the wall's gonna sit, right at the last step, right before the overhang. So I'm just gonna take my framing square, or no, wait, sorry. We need to know, if we're gonna make a notch for this board, we have to know the dimension of the board. So for this top plate, Let's just pretend that the top plate of that wall is a two by six. So if it's a two by six, what would be, well, if it's construction terms, what is it really? It's not really a two by six, it's a one, one, one and a half, well, one and a half by five and a half. So what we want to go by is the height of that, because that's what's going off of this. Like, the width doesn't really matter in this case. So we want to go off one and a half inches up. So I'm just going to measure up from this last line I made from step six. One and a half inches. Once I have that mark, I take the framing square, line it up, and then just make a quick horizontal line. So in this case, it's a small, it's a pretty small bird's mouth, but that's what it is right there. So that's what's going to be sitting on the wall. And usually I'll write, uh, you can write bird's mouth, I'm just going to write cut. So whoever's doing this, whether it's me or anybody else, knows to cut that out. All right, so now we made the bird's mouth. We have an overhang that we want. The, to make the overall dimensions of this rafter, like this goes back to the diagram where I was explaining the line length. If you look at letter B, that's the line length. But theoretically, that's not the rafter length. Rafter lengths are usually a few inches shorter. Does anyone know why? Look at the dimension on the letter B, like how it's measured. Like, if we're making a rafter for that length, not including the overhang, pretend there's no overhang, why would the rafter be somewhat, somewhat shorter? I mentioned it before with the ridge board, the P. The ridge board, yes. The ridge board. <coughs> So if we want to be true to our dimensions, we have to consider that ridge board. So in this case, I'm, we're going to make the ridge board another two by six, which really is one and a half by five and a half. We're going to have to take that measurement off the top of this, the cut out of it, or else we just have more overhang. It won't be true to our dimensions. So if we're going to do one and a half, is that one I'm going to have to take off the front? Just measure off one and a half inches. Why no? I don't know. I just assumed that the way you asked Remember, that. Well, <laughs> Remember, we're only messing with half the roof. The ridge board is right down the middle. We're doing two rafters on each side. So we're not going to take a whole inch and a half on one side, another inch and a half on the other rafter. We have to divide that in half. So you have to remember that. People get that mixed up all the time. So <laughs> in this case, one and a half divided by two between two rafters be three quarters of an inch. That's what we're going to take off that. So in this case, and remember, we're not taking the diagonal length, we're taking horizontal length. So I'm just going to line this up on that pitch. And I'm going to measure over three quarters of an inch and make a mark. Same thing has to be done to the other side. Remember I mentioned at the beginning that the, uh, the 
equivalent to a ridge wall on the top. At the bottom, where all the tail cuts are, we have a board called the fascia board. Now, if you want this to be true, a true overhang, you're going to have you take off some of your overhang for your fascia board. So in this case, we'll make we'll just make it easy and make it a, a fascia board, a standard one by eight or six or something. Like it's not construction wise, so we'll make it one inch. So same thing I did over there. I'm not going to do it because it takes a little time, but you just go over from here, one inch, mark, make the line, say fascia, people will know to cut that off. So that will be our true rafter line. Okay, so just to go over what I just did, I divided the steps, I got my pitch. In this case, it would be six steps, but here it was five, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Made my overhang afterwards. Cut out, made out a bird, uh, bird's mouth cut to fit securely on the wall, and I considered I took out the ridge board space and the fascia space on each end to make it the rafter a true length. Uh, that, that's it. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Can we see which your layout? Turn the board so we can see it. Yeah, I was going to make everyone sit up front, but no one wanted to. <laughs> and this usually would be a line